hello friends in this video we are going to talk about fetus in utero some definitions some terms that are very important when we talk about delivery when we talk about obstetrics in obstetrics this uh, this terminologies are very very important and we need to understand very well now first of all we need to see what a fetal lie what means the a fetal lie One minute. Hmm. Fetal lie is a relationship of long axis of fetus to the long axis of uterus. For example, if we see this picture here, in this picture, first picture, what we are seeing here is we have a fetus. The fetus long axis is this. And the, the, the axis of uterus is also similar. Okay. In the second picture, if we see the fetus axis, long axis of the fetus is again same. Okay. So again, if I if I draw here. Fetal axis is same. So again, the fetal lie is same. Longitudinal lie. But in this third case, if you see, the uterine axis is like this. But the fetus long axis is this. So what we talk about, when we talk about fetal lie, we talk about the relationship between these two axes. The first one is the uterus and the second one is fetus. How it correlate to each other? There can be three kind of lie only. The first is longitudinal lie. As I seen in this picture. This and this. 99% of cases we have longitudinal lie. Okay. Either it can be a cephalic or bridge or whatever. Only 0.5% cases we have a transverse lie. In which the fetal axis is not parallel to the uterine axis but it is perpendicular to the uterine axis okay so and the question arises now that why we have a longitudinal line why the fetus can have in many cases why 99% of longitudinal line because it is very simple friends the uterus is this kind of ovoid okay when the fetus is in flexion it is also this kind of ovoid so this ovoid fix into this ovoid. Okay, so that's why it is a longitudinal always. But when we talk about, see, if the fetus size is small, like this, and irregular, then in case, then in case the this ovoid can be like this or it can be rotated also. So again. <clears throat> fetus when the fetus is small in early pregnancy fetus can be in va uh, variable line it can be in longitudinal it can be trans uh, transverse any line it can be but as the fetus grows in size and the pregnancy goes to the term so the fetal ovoid can only be fitted in uterine ovoid in longitudinal line okay so that's why we have a longitudinal line more often now it was a lie. Second, we need to do a presentation. What is a presentation? What do you simply mean by presentation? Presentation we mean by the part of fetus. There are various fetus parts like head, like breech. Any of this part, which part occupies the lower segment of uterus? makes its presentation for example if it is a cephalic presentation in which the cephalic means the head head is occupying the <coughs> lower uterine segment if we talk about bridge 
in this case breach occupies the lower uterine segment and if it is shoulder shoulder presentation in in shoulder presentation one shoulder is occupying the lower segment of uterus so when we talk about presentation the second thing should be come in your mind is the part of the fetus which occupies the lower uterine segment okay <clears throat> now in case of 96% the uh, presentation is cephalic 3% cases are of breech <clears throat> and 0.5% cases are of so shoulder presentation okay <clears throat> now you need to th also think that why we got more and more cephalic presentations why not we have a more common breech presentation because uh, the gravity makes here a very important impact because the head is is head is a, a part that is uh, with more condensation and more weight and more density that's why the head goes down first okay so that's why we have a cephalic presentation in most of the time now again i need to remember one thing we were talking about presentation and now we are talking about presenting part when we talk about presentation we have three options first is breech second is sorry first is cephalic second is breech and third is shoulder only three thing we have now we talk about presenting part presenting part means which part of the fetus lies above the internal os immediately above the internal os for example this is uterus and this is internal os so right above the internal os which part Okay, we are going deeper. See, for example, see, see, we have a vertex presentation. Sorry, we have a cephalic presentation. Okay, now in cephalus, we have different parts of the fetus head. For example, eye, nose, cephal, occiput, sinciput. All this part we have vertex. Everything part we have. But the part which immediately above the uh, internal os that makes a presenting part. Vertex is a part of fetal head, a cephalic of fetus. Cephalic presentation with vertex presenting part. Okay, it can be vertex, it can be brow, or it can be face. Again, all these three presenting parts are of head. So, if we talk about the presentation, it is cephalic presentation. But in the cephalic presentation, we have three different parts of the head. And among these three different parts, which part lies immediately above the internal os? That makes the presenting part. The vertex presentation is 96% uh, common. Bro presentation is uh, less common, 0.5% presentation only. And face presentation is only 0.1%. Okay. And how it decides? that which part would be there so for that thing you need to understand the flexion of head you need to understand the flexion of the head see in this picture in first picture the head is very flexed the, the fetus is flexed, the head is flexed. That's why here is the internal os. And this part is just above the internal os and that part is called presenting part and in this case it is vertex. In this second image, this part of the fetus head or the fetus is not well flexed. It is partially extended. Okay, it's not flexed actually. It is deflexed. It's called deflexed. Means the head is not very flexed. So what happens here is may this bigger part 
now makes the presenting part in d flex head the third is partial extension the head is at all not presentation uh, at all not flexed but it is partially extended and that's why this part that is a bro if you can see is just above the internal os and it is called bro presenting part and this image fourth image is of complete extension of the head and that's why what we got here is above just above the internal os that is face so it becomes a face as a presenting part okay so this is how happens things here so the most common thing is vertex in 96 percentage of cases now we go further deeper into denominator what is denominator denominator is imaginary thing we we just uh, we just see the part presenting part and we define a bony point remember always denominator denominator is a bony point always we define a bony particular point on the presenting part a bony fixed point on the presenting part okay if we see about vertex the presenting so the denominator in this vertex is Who is occiput? Okay, I will tell you separately here. This is the head of the fetus. Okay, so my friends, this is the vertex presentation. And we've put occiput here as a denominator. We we take it as a denominator. Vertex for vertex it is occiput. For bro, for uh, bro presentation we have put a part here that is called sinciput. In vertex presentation we have occiput. In bro presentation we have sinciput. If we talk about face presentation, we have mentum here as a denominator that is mentum. It is in case of face presentation. When there is a breach presentation, we take sacrum as a denominator. Now why we are doing all these things? Why we are defining a denominator on the presenting part? Because this denominator actually denominator is going to actually uh, define the position of fetus in the uterus and that comes the next part to you for example we have we are seeing the uh, pelvis from above okay so it is a uh, kind of pelvis we can see here this is now we divided into four parts okay we divided it into four by half anterior half posterior and again anterior posterior again divided so total eight parts we have divided now if we take that if the occiput if the occiput of the fetus is in this is here that makes the that makes the position of the baby is left occipital transverse because what is left occipital transverse because we take part, we take the denominator here is occiput because it is a vertex presentation so the position of the occiput is left transverse so left occipital transverse which is the very common position of fetus you can see here see here this image left occipital transverse in which the occiput is here 
in left side of the pelvis. So it is left occipital transverse. This here, if the occiput uh, is posterior here, then it is called left occipital anterior. Similarly, right occipital anterior, right occipital transverse. And if the if the fetus uh, occiput is here, so it is direct anterior position. If the fetus occiput in vertex presentation is in posterior part, see, so here is here makes the right occipital posterior position, right occipital uh, left occipital posterior position. And if the if the occiput it is in directly posterior, so this position is called directly occipital posterior, direct occipital posterior. So you need to now understand on which basis we are doing all this situation. In which basis we define that the position of the fetus in uterus according to the pelvis by denominator. We define first denominator and the denominator in which part it is positioned we take we define the, the various position of the fetus. Left occipital transverse position is the most common position followed by left occipital anterior in right side, right occipital posterior position is more common than right occipital anterior. If there is a direct occipital posterior position, the delivery becomes difficult. So, this, this is how we define the position of the baby. Now, the last thing is fetal attitude. Fetal attitude means it is a relationship between the various parts of the fetus itself okay so this is this thing the fetal attitude is it is just only and only related to the fetus how the part of the fetuses are related to each other for example in most commonly in most of the cases the fetal attitude is of flexion where the head is flexed the arms legs all are flexed like this here here first it can be partially flexed partially deflexed okay here's a deflexed head deflexed head is here in the second image if you see the head is not well well flexed not completely flexed in third image we are already have seen that the head is not well flexed it is actually extended but not fully extended also it is partially extended and in fourth position what we see is the head is completely extended so this makes a fetal attitude and according to the fetal attitude the engaging diameter of the fetal head changes and according to the fetal, uh, engaging diameter the labor becomes easier or not easier. Thank you for listening.